Honourable Member for Watson. Thanks, Deputy Speaker. Uh, my part of Sydney uh, got the smoke. We didn't get the flames. We were a long way from the flames. But the response from my part of Sydney is something which I'm tremendously proud of and I want to say a few words about. Because parts of my part of Sydney, some of the suburbs in particular, are often lightning rods for some people to use building arguments of division in Australia. Uh, and at different points, people turn up with, with TV cameras to try to argue that in some way some parts of my part of Sydney aren't truly Australian. I think after I explain a little bit of the effort and the response from my local area, uh, anyone who previously had those views will be affected. Uh, there are a series of community groups throughout, throughout the electorate of Watson that have played an extraordinary role, and I'm going to go through some of them, but if anyone wants to have a look, we've launched a web page just called Side by Side, Our Community Standing with Yours. And on that, we have been listing all the different projects that different community groups have been involved with. The total value so far is $380,000 worth of donations to various bushfire appeals from my part of Sydney, uh, with a long way, a long way to go. Uh, in the main street of the suburb of Lakemba, uh, the, uh, a separate office uh, from the organisation Human Appeal uh, was taken over and became a donation site. Uh, there were pallets and there were donations coming in, and as a result of combined work between Human Appeal, between Lighthouse Community Support and between Bankstown PCYC, which had already been involved in this following the fires in Taree, the level of generosity was beyond belief. Uh, supplies were delivered to Cabago, to Braidwood, to Taree, to the Indigenous community of Perfleet on uh, Berapi land. And when I say donations, we're talking five trucks, two vans to Taree, all donated by individual members of the community, three trucks to Cabago and Braidwood. In coordination with the Muslim Women's Association and Blaze Aid delivered supplies to Adelong. The total number of donations, including goods, money, transportation and time, totaled more than $100,000. We had uh, uh, an elderly lady come in uh, wearing, wearing a hijab, with canned food, saying, I have no cash to donate, uh, but they need this more than I do, and handed over effectively the contents of her pantry. Uh, we had, uh, when the trucks were going to the different fire-affected communities, uh, people saying that we had got there well ahead of the charities, and in some cases well ahead of the government, uh, and when some of the volunteers would say, "How, what did you think of us beforehand? People were pretty blunt, pretty honest. One said, oh, you're the people that we normally don't like. Uh, another used a description uh, that explains a lot, but is not parliamentary, uh, so I can't go there. And then when asked, what do you think of us now? Those community members were greeted as they should always be greeted as proud fellow Australians. Uh, I acknowledge Bilal al-Hayek, Gandhi Sindian, uh, Basha al-Jamal, uh, and the local uh, state member there, Jihad Dib, all of whom were involved uh, in those trucks at different points, as well as a series of volunteers. The trucks as well were donated by, tr by local trucking firms. Uh, but this sort of effort has spread across the whole community. The Canterbury City Community Centre Knitting Group, based in Lakemba, has been knitting blankets for animals and trauma teddies for children in bushfire-affected communities. My local rugby league club, the Bulldogs Football Club and Canterbury Leagues, pledged $50,000 towards natural disaster relief. The Melkite Catholic Welfare uh, and I Melkite, based in Greenacre, donated a further $10,000 to the Rural Fire Service. Cass Care, the Chinese Australia Services Society, uh, set up a donation site on their own site. Canterbury Bankstown Council uh, cancelled its fireworks for Australia Day and donated $10,000. Maronites on a Mission donated $10,000. Strathfield Men's Shed has been building possum boxes and bee hotels that will be delivered where they're needed in the Blue Mountains. Greek Orthodox Belmore Parish 
All Saints has been delivering and donating kitchen goods to Central Mangrove. United Australia Lebanese Movement donated $5,000 to the Cumberland Zone. Sydney Muslim Cyclists donated medical supplies for on-duty firefighters at, at Tumut uh, and donated $10,000 to the station on behalf of the Tumut Cycle Classic. Campsy RSL uh, has uh, been donating uh, and raising uh, uh, $220,000 for bushfire relief and $50,000 for drought relief, um, and a further $15,000 donated to the Lake Conjola Bowling Club. Camp CRSL Group uh, also donated $50,000 to Leaders for the Land, that's the, the drought project. But the challenges come as the donations kept coming in locally uh, that there was a new problem uh, when some of the communities started to send back the message, nothing more at the moment, please. Uh, because the, they were running out of the capacity to manage the level of donations that were arriving. And at that point, the community uh, groups, together with Jihad Dib, Sophie Kotsis, uh, gathered the state members, gathered in my office, and came up with the next stage of the project. And it was based on discussions with the member for Macquarie, Susan Templeman, who was explaining, having been through it herself, that you get to a point a few years, after about a few months, a year or two, when you realise you were insured and the insurance is being paid, but the insurance does not cover everything. And it's at that point that the kids come back with different things that were special to them and you want to give for them and you just don't have the money. Uh, so we decided locally that our local project would be for the kids in fire-affected areas who have lost their bikes, that we would now engage in the fundraising to make sure they can get bikes. And for kids who had musical instruments that had been lost, that we would engage in the fundraising to be able to purchase musical interest, instruments. And that's our, our next stage that we're going through. We're working now in trying to identify local businesses in fire-affected areas that would otherwise sell bikes and musical instruments so that we can purchase from them uh, do the assembly back, back in our area and then provide them down there as gifts. Because we don't want, as can so easily be the case, that by turning up with donations and gifts you in fact do a local business uh, harm at a time when it's desperately trying to find customers. Uh, that's the local uh, effort which has been extraordinary and, as I say, uh, side by side our community standing with yours is a web page where we've we've put all that together. I couldn't be more proud of the community and for any of the people, um, there's more in the other place than this place who from time to time have tried to vilify my local area. Uh, have a look at the web page first is my suggestion. Uh, I also want to acknowledge just in my portfolio areas uh, the work of the union movement and the work of the arts community. Uh, the union, union members uh, both in their professional capacity and in a voluntary capacity, have been making an extraordinary effort. Uh, I refer to the Maritime Union Australian and Kiwi seafarers on the Far Saracen were the first on the scene at Malakuta with much needed supplies of food, water and diesel on site. The civilian crews of the training vessel MV Sycamore and the supply vessel Far Senator worked to back up the firefighters and to bring relief to those who were stranded and were cut off by fires. Australian seafarers made up of MUA members and uh, AMOU and AIMPE members on board these ships worked tirelessly over a period of weeks to assist the 4,000 plus people trapped by fires at Malakuta Beach. The Electrical Trades Union, when things were really tough in the Blue Mountains fires, the Rail Emergency Response Unit worked side by side with Royal Fire Service to protect Sydney's trains infrastructure on the Blue Mountains Line and the Southern Highlands Line. Their efforts were simply heroic. ETU members have been working long hours to restore power after the fires, including replacing power for poles and other assets. Uh, the CEPU, the Communications Union, uh, in an initiative which started amongst the posties at Wagga Distribution Centre, all 43 employees across the delivery centre and the Riverina Mail Sorting Centre decided to forego their work Christmas celebrations. Instead, they used the cash to donate items being specifically requested by a local bushfire appeal centre. They threw in over 100 bottles of Gatorade and 20 bags of Allen's snakes, a special request from the local fireys on the front line. 
The newly amalgamated United Workers' Unions established a half million dollar climate disaster relief fund to provide immediate assistance to members impacted by the unprecedented fires that continue to devastate communities in this country. The Transport Workers' Union truck drivers have been providing relief to bushfire affected families in their spare time with their own resources. The ACTU and state-based Labor councils, along with many if not all unions, have raised substantial funds for bushfire relief or encouraged their members to donate. And one short anecdote from the union movement of a combined effort, because I don't think anything speaks more powerfully than this simple story uh, about a family from Cabago. Toby, Nicole and Layla lost their home in Cabago from the bushfires and were made homeless. They're a young couple with a young child who have been forced to live in a camper van. The local union members from a range of different unions got together and volunteered to help rebuild their home, and they built a house for the family in 10 days. The concepts that we talk about at times like this, about people looking out for each other, for people sticking up for each other, uh, are summarised in one word, which is solidarity. And uh, in many of the discussions that happen for the union movement in this place, I think it's important that stories like this are kept in mind as well. With respect to the arts community, people, and I came across this beautifully summarised by someone who I have no idea who she is other than the Instagram title, The Emma Files, who gave a lovely summary uh, of how much artists had come forward. And I'll go to it in a bit more detail than she did. But uh, in Ulladulla, one of the generators that was keeping the evacuation centres running was supplied by, the, by a circus. Online, there have been endless auctions from 500 authors and illustrators on the Authors for Fireys campaign, raising money through auctions. An online auction for, auction for visual artists called Art Fights Fire raised a further $160,000 for bushfire relief. Opera Australia and a series of different performing arts companies had collections after all their performances. Even the Wiggles hosted a reunion show for bushfire relief on the 18th of January. Classical musicians in Sydney held a fundraising concert on, the, on January 30 called Music for Our Country with all of the proceeds going to bushfires. Support actors set up a bushfire relief fund. And those in Victoria would know that the Falls Festival was after it had started, they got the first day out of the way, and the Falls Festival in Lawn then had to be cancelled because the site wasn't safe. Fire was on the way. A whole lot of musicians who were about to have one of their biggest gigs of the year suddenly found they were among the 9,000 campers who had to be evacuated from the site. What happened? Spontaneously, in Melbourne, there were bushfire relief concerts. Halsey, Youngblood, Peking Duck, Holly Holly, Baker Boy, Bad Dreams, Total, Totally Unicorn, Eaglemont, Lime Cordial, all holding off the back of an immense disappointment, making sure that they were holding fundraisers to help the people who were being most harmed. This is a wonderful time in terms of the response and a horrific time in terms of what we are responding to. What uh, needs to be understood is it is hard for anyone so directly affected uh, to know the extent to which the whole nation wants to stand with them. Uh, and so I speak simply as someone from an area uh, where we breathed in the smoke but we never saw a flame to say that our community now is making the biggest effort I've seen in my lifetime from our, our part of Sydney uh, and for the people who are harmed, we intend to be there for the long haul.